Hi, I'm Carl Conrad and welcome to Australian Immigration News, proudly brought to you by Australian Immigration Law Services here in Sydney. In tonight's edition, we cover when is a minister not actually a minister, clarifications on the 485 extension program, the happy green family get a positive outcome, workers on temporary visas being exploited yet again, power couples should be given priority in the visa shakeup, unions upset about the possible scrapping of the labour market testing, and the Minister Advisory Council Council get together with the Minister for Tea and Biscuits. Now was she or wasn't she the Department of Home Affairs Minister when Karen Andrews cancelled somebody's visa? The Guardian ran this interesting story last week about the federal court case has to decide on this issue after a complaint was filed saying she wasn't actually the Minister at all at the time his visa was cancelled. You see, back on the 6th of May 2021, when the Liberal Morrison government was in power, the PM decided he would also become the Doha minister and another minister and then another minister and he didn't tell anybody except for the governor general. The plaintiff argues that he was wronged when his visa was cancelled by Karen Andrews as she wasn't actually the minister at all. The PM really was. Therefore the cancellation was invalid and he should be given his visa back. Of course if he is successful in this argument then it raises all sorts of problems regarding what Karen Andrews authorised during this period. An interesting case indeed. No doubt we will be watching this very carefully. And the good news story of this week was when the Green family was finally granted a lifeline by Andrew Giles to give them a second chance at obtaining permanent residency. Well tonight some great news. They've been switched from a bridging visa to a long-term working tourism visa and they can now apply for permanent residency. Mark and Kelly join me now live from their Adelaide home. Thanks for joining us, Mark and Kelly. Just tell us how significant this move is and how optimistic you feel about it. Oh, this move is absolutely brilliant. I, I couldn't ask for anything better, or we couldn't ask for anything better. I mean, it's a stepping stone towards the, the right direction. Uh, we've already applied for our permanent residence uh, uh, as from last Friday. So hopefully it all goes smooth sailing from here and uh, we can actually start living life. Uh, the stress has subsided and yeah, it's, it's overwhelming. Uh, and if it wasn't for the support of everybody watching and uh, listening to our story as, as it went along, uh, and yourself and uh, the ministers, uh, we, we wouldn't be in this position, you know, we'd be back in Scotland. So I can't thank everybody that's had a part in this enough. It seems it would be seen as too much to give them their permanent residency directly, so a new visitor visa with work rights was granted so they could apply for residency through another visa application. This was a clear signal from the Minister that it is not so easy just to be given permanent residency and it still needs to be earned on merit. We wish the Green family the best of luck to gain their permanent residency pathway. The government has released more information to explain how the new extension program will operate for the 485 graduate visa in the post-study work stream. Graduates will be eligible for this extension if they meet all the eligibility criteria for the post-study work stream of the temporary graduate visa 485 and their qualification is on the list of eligible qualifications and we'll leave a link to that document in the description. In addition, one of the following must also apply. They hold a temporary graduate visa post-study work stream on the 1st of July 2023 or they have lodged an application for a temporary graduate visa post-study work stream by the 1st of July 2023 and that visa has not been decided or they lodge an application for a temporary graduate visa post-study work stream after the 1st of July 2023. Now if graduates hold a temporary graduate visa post-study work stream that expires before the 1st of July 2023 but they do not hold an eligible qualification, they can still apply for this extension. However, in this case they will be granted a two-year temporary activity Australian pandemic event visa subclass 408 instead of a further graduate visa subclass 485. Now graduates can apply for this two-year 408 pandemic visa if they were granted a temporary graduate visa post-study work stream before the 15th of December 2021 
and the visa took effect on or after the 1st of February 2020 and they were in Australia for the whole time that their visa was in effect between the 1st of February 2020 and the 15th of December 2021 and they also hold an eligible qualification. Now the interesting part is, those who hold the graduate visas in the post-study work stream on or after the 1st of July. You will not have to apply for a new visa, for your visa will be extended automatically for two years. The Immigration Department system should identify that you previously completed one of these eligible occupations. Just how is somewhat of a mystery, but for now we can assume they still have the CRICOS registration numbers of the courses that you completed and will match that to the list of eligible occupations. The exploitation of our temporary resident visa holders in Australia rose its ugly head again this week as it has done so many, many times in the last 20 years. Time and time again we hear promises from governments to crack down on workplace exploitation. The new minister has been the latest of many promising reforms as the ABC focused upon this week. No one can excuse the predatory behaviour of employers who are exploiting people. It's flagged an overhaul of the migration system. These exploited practices flow on across the Australian workforce and really diminish wages and conditions for, for all workers. Australia is experiencing a different kind of migration over the last few years since the pandemic began. A surge of people moving inland to live, as the ABC reported this week. Many Australians made a pandemic-inspired sea or tree change in recent years, moving from the cities to the country or coast. But a new report shows some are now moving further and further inland, triggering a population bounce in towns with historically low growth. As more and more migrants enter Australia on their 491 and 489 visas, this is in fact good news, since the regional areas they are restricted to no longer contain the old dying towns of the past. So there's a measure called net internal migration, um, that basically shows the number of people relocating to areas from other parts of Australia. And some of the towns include Glen Innes in New South Wales, uh, York in Western Australia, Port Pirie and Murray Bridge in South Australia. And these are towns that have had historically low population growth but are now seeing a bit of a, a boost because people are moving to these towns. And the big draw factors are, of course, housing availability and affordability and job opportunities. Jobs are really booming in the regions right now. So there you go. Are you looking for cheaper housing, jobs and a better way of life? Then head to Inland Australia. The Ministerial Advisory Council on Skilled Migration met in Canberra this week with the Immigration Minister Andrew Giles to discuss the government's migration reform agenda, including tackling migrant worker exploitation, the roles of the Jobs and Skills Australia, and the significant reduction in the visa backlog. The Minister said, We have addressed the worst aspects of the previous government visa backlog, but we understand much more remains to be done. Well, that's good to hear that they're catching up for a coffee, having a chat about how things are going and what they're planning to do. But I'm not sure the worst of the visa backlog is yet behind us. We still have a large number of people waiting more than three years for their visas to be granted. The 476 applicants, the Fiancé Visa 300 visa applicants and the 887 visa applicants and more. When people no longer write in the comment sections of our videos that they've been waiting for more than three years for their visas, then we can say we have addressed the worst cases. The Home Affairs Minister Claire O'Neill said that Australia's migration system could be more efficient and could better identify applicants who make a huge contribution to the economy, such as power couples, as she calls them. She is quoted as saying, when we're assessing migrants who are applying to the Permanent Skilled Visa program, we should be able to prioritise a power couple. The Financial Review ran a picture of the Minister's example of a power couple. Australian National University Vice-Chancellor Professor Brian Smith and his wife economist Jenny Gordon. Now I'm no expert, but I would have to say this couple seem to be over 45 years of age. In fact, I would say possibly even over 50. And it raises a question that many, many of you write in about in the comments section, that older people should be given more value in many
many professions. Currently, most visa applications for permanent residency have a cutoff age of 45. There is clear evidence that this needs to be changed, and it is great to see the minister supporting older and more experienced workers. Particularly in nursing, teaching, academics, and doctors, where quite often it's not till you're over 45 that you have the most experience to offer. Power couples are all well and good, but older and more experienced professionals still have much to offer in Australia. It seems that the thought of scrapping the labour market testing requirements fully for a two working visa is upsetting the union movements. In the Financial Review article this week, it was interesting to see that the Australian Nursing and Midwifery Federation lead the charge on keeping the LMT requirements. It seems a somewhat ironic call considering nobody denies the shortage in the nursing profession, so why on earth does the Midwifery Federation want to hold on to labour market testing? Of course, in general, labour market testing is just a complete waste of time, for indeed you're asking an employer to conduct the advertising when they have already chosen a candidate. Seriously, I'm not sure I'm the only one who sees this stupidity of the system. And now it's time for our reader's comments section once again. Andre writes in and says, Hi Carl, thank you for always providing pertinent information regarding immigration news. I am struggling to hear any news anywhere on the 494 offshore visa news. And like anyone else in the visa system, I am frustrated that I have spent all my savings on a process. I have passed on all the facts, yet almost a year later, don't even know when me and my family will ever get to Australia. How incredibly frustrating frustrating for anyone to go through seeing applications virtually frozen for so long. It is crazy that the government is always saying they are focused on supporting regional areas, but in reality their actions are the opposite. They have been holding up these 494, 489 visas and now the 491 visas. They are all regionally sponsored in one way or another, with conditions that workers must live and work in regional Australia. It is time for the minister to stand up and support regional Australia instead of this shallow pretense shown in the media. And now on the lighter side, here is one from Lucas. The Simpsons scene was absolutely on point and unexpected. And as I replied, yes, our editor is a wizard. As always, thanks to all of you who write in and make these comments. While I try to get to all of them, there are just too many to reply to everyone. So stay tuned for next week's edition where we will bring you all the updates. As always, take care out there and I'll see you next time. So bye for now.